Well, I'm Bill May. Uh, I worked at uh, Beckman Instruments for 30 years. In the last 21 of those years, I was a senior vice president, general counsel, and secretary for the company, and uh, retired about 10 years ago. So that's basically who I am. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm really pretty honored. I've just been uh, named to be the next chairman of the uh, board of directors for the Beckman Foundation. So I've been on the board probably about uh, 12 years now. It's been a real honor to uh, be there and, and to oversee Dr. Beckman's foundation and, and to really follow his philosophy statement of, of uh, really putting forth young people, especially in science, in their leading edge technology and research. The Beckman Foundation was set up by Dr. Beckman in order to really uh, uh, provide funding for uh, young scientists in particular, I think, uh, in the leading, er leading edge areas of science, uh, technology, engineering. Um, these are people who probably weren't, they weren't, they aren't known in the uh, scientific area yet. They're young people, they can't get an NIH grant or um, any other type of particular grant, so this gives them a chance to go forward and start their career in science. And uh, that's, he wanted, Dr. Beckman's feeling was he made a lot of his fortune uh, through science in the company he established, and he, wants, he wanted his, uh, his foundation to sort of give it back to science. Well, Arnold Beckman, uh, from my standpoint, really was a tremendous uh, contributor to the advancement of science in the 20th century. He essentially gave scientists the tools they needed to do research and to solve the problems in many areas of science uh, and uh, medicine and general research. So he just, through his work, he was able to give people the opportunity to complete their, their research or uh, to find the solutions for various problems we have, either in sort of basic research or the application of that research into uh, uh, solutions. And uh, in particular, I mean, the focus of a lot of his, in, his instrumentation was really measuring things and gives, gives scientists or medical people information that they then can take and solve problems. Most people, when they think of Dr. Beckman, they think of the pH meter. Um, in fact, he was inducted in the National Inventors Hall of Fame for, for that particular invention. Um, and as a sideline, I went with him when he was inducted. Just he and I went back there to Washington, D.C. He was, in, he was inducted in 1987. Anyway, then the spectrophotometer, uh, the, uh, he's been involved with uh, uh, centrifuges, uh, synthesizers, uh, um, all these things. There, there, there are just a multitude of scientific instrumentation that he was, uh, CO2 measurements. Uh, so most, most areas in medicine uh, and in science, scientific instrumentation, he had his finger on. I mean, we the company evolved from being scientific instrumentation into medical instrumentation. So we had all kinds of um, blood chemistry instruments. Um, and all this led to really helping the diagnostic of, of, of disease for uh, many, many people. I think one of the things that Dr. Beckman really felt strongly about was being able to help young scientists in their careers. And, and many times when scientists come out uh, as a PhD or maybe even while they're just doing postdoc work, they don't have the funds or the ability to get those funds either through private grants or the government grants or even other foundations. So he used, uh, wanted us to use his money to help those people in their careers, and many of them then go on to be uh, successful in their particular careers, making some very good
good contributions to the scientific world. Well, I have quite a few, uh, speaking of Dr. Beckman and a relationship with him, I was very fortunate to know him fairly well during the last 20, 25 years of his life. And uh, I learned a lot about the man. I mean, I wish I had been around when he was in sort of in the prime of his career, but it was more toward the end. Um, but as I said earlier, I went with him, just he and I went back to Washington, D.C. when he was inducted into the National Veterans Hall of Fame. And it was really uh, quite an honor to, to just, he and I go together. We stayed together back there. And, and uh, one of the funny side notes of that was that Dr. Beckman, uh, as much as he had uh, obviously acquired a fair amount of wealth through his company, he uh, still flew a coach. <laughs> I forget when I got the tickets and I, from the travel department of the company. And uh, here I had just been, you know, named, I was the, just been named the general counsel, so you and I are going back together. And I looked at the tickets and I thought, holy cow, uh, somehow they'd made a mistake and I'm going to be fired because I've got coach tickets here for Dr. Beckman. And then I later found out that's how he traveled. So he sat in the window seat, I sat in the center seat, and off we went. And we, had a, we had a great trip, talked all the time, learned all about his earlier life when he was back in Illinois, uh, where he grew up, and then going out when he was. Uh, hopped the trains and went out west and spent a couple of summers, I think, out in Ashton, Idaho. Uh, he actually played the piano for Silent Movie House out there. So just those kind of things and learning about how he, he developed uh, a real appreciation for electronics, which was kind of interesting for a person who was in the chemistry area. And I think that helped him as he, because he worked at uh, Bell Labs in, uh, up in uh, New Jersey early in his life. and. Uh, so I think that helped him with creating a lot of his instrumentation, in particular the pH meter, which all started it all. And a lot of that technology just followed right on through. Uh, even some of the basic technology from the pH meter was used in some of the, the uh, blood chemistry diagnostic equipment we see today. Well, you know, as far as uh, I think he felt it was uh, quite an honor to be inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame. You think about the people, Edison and, and the Wright brothers and uh, many, many others that uh, have been inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame. So I think he felt pretty pretty strongly that it was quite an honor. Um, I, didn't think he, I don't think he really thought that it was necessarily surprising that, that he got to where he was. I think he, he's, he worked hard at it. He, he, he spent a lot of time um, you know, going to school, getting his PhD at Caltech, and, and then uh, tinkering with things. He was just a, a very inquisitive person in science and always wanted to understand what was going on. Even later in life, when he was much older, uh, he always liked to talk to the younger people. That He would come up to the company, at, this is long after he retired, but he'd come up and he just would love to have lunch with some of the, the younger engineers and chemists and so forth of the company and just uh, would ask questions, you know, always inquiring what they were doing. And then with that, that I think is probably a trait of many great people that have been very successful in life. But always, I think young people always have to continue to ask why. Why does this happen? Why? Find out. And uh, so I think he was, he was just very enthusiastic about life and, and, uh, and the work that he did. And uh, I think he just, and he loved his company, loved the employees, uh, and everybody just, you know, really felt fortunate to work at his company. Well, Ted Brown was, is, uh, or had been a member of the Beckman Foundation uh, Board of Directors when I joined, so he had been on the board a while. So, uh, and, and then he retired uh, a few years ago. And so I, uh, but during that time frame, maybe maybe five or six years, I worked with him on the board, and I found him to be uh, just a um, a perfect board member from the standpoint of, uh, of a lot of what he did. And uh, I say that from a background I was uh, secretary to the Beckman uh, Instruments and Beckman Coulter board, and I was actually on the board for a while. Um, and so having that experience, you see, you learn. Who are, who are good board members and who maybe aren't 
quite as good. Some are better than others. Some do their homework. Some don't. Some participate more. And Ted was that type of person. He, I think the most important quality I found with Ted is that he, he, he similarly made it always inquired as to why. If an issue comes up and maybe you had to vote on it, he wanted to understand it totally, get all the facts before you, so you can make an informed decision. Everybody should do that. And uh, he was a very balanced person. So he, he uh, and I think sort of a calming. He, he never got too excited one way or the other. And that was, uh, I think, always good. And I, I appreciate that. So he was uh, a person that uh, was uh, good to work with on the board in that capacity. Well, I, I think I take that from Dr. Beckman's uh, leadership as the importance of having an interdisciplinary uh, opportunity among you know, scientists in various fields. Uh, no one scientist is going to necessarily discover the most important thing or, or the advancement of something in a particular line of engineering or research. And uh, it's so important. Collaborative efforts uh, from various disciplines are so important to move forward. I think sometimes uh, uh, we lose that in, in our uh, universities and even uh, in our universities. We don't, we don't really have enough collaboration and, and opportunities to interact uh, in the various areas. I know from engineering to chemistry to biology, I mean, all that is important to, to bring together. And I think that's what Dr. Beckman felt was important. And I think that's why he, he liked the idea, especially the you know, University of Illinois, but in other places as well. Well, I think Arnold Beckman and Ted Brown have a lot of, a lot of similar traits, I think, from the standpoint. I know Ted Brown really uh, respected um, and uh, uh, sort of, uh, I guess, felt like Dr. Beckman was a, maybe not necessarily a mentor, but somebody he really looked up to from uh, what he had accomplished over his lifetime. And I think Ted kind of is in the same mold to a certain extent, uh, able to, in Ted's case, bring a, uh, a group together and create sort of, with Dr. Beckman's help, this Beckman Institute here. And uh, much like Dr. Beckman brought people to get together and created his company. Um, and I think they have very similar personalities, I think. I mean, I think Ted Brown is, uh, I guess what I would say, you know, maybe in the sort of vernacular, the real, this is the real man. This is not somebody who's trying to be somebody else. And Dr. Beckman was that way. Dr. Beckman was a very unassuming, humble type person. Getting back to my fact of flying, you know, coach aircraft, and when he could fly first class, he could probably buy the whole fleet of airplanes, but he's flying coach. And, uh, and it's very uh, unassuming from that standpoint. I think Ted's much the same way. But when they, when they talk, people listen. And uh, because normally when they have something to say, it's important and something to listen to. And I think from that standpoint, they, they're very, uh, very similar. And uh, I think their, their legacy is uh, somewhat similar. Although one more in the academic area, even though Dr. Beckman started in the academic area, he then went into business and later philanthropy. Mm -hmm.